All right. My name is Ed, and I'm here today to talk about Cucumber, which is an automation tool. And uh, I'll introduce myself a bit, and then I want to get to know you guys. So um, my name is Ed Wyanko, and uh, I, back in the 1900s, I graduated from University of Pittsburgh <laughs> and uh, launched into a development uh, career at that point. And now I've uh, wound up as a quality engineer and I work at the Technology Development Center uh, under Steve, but I'm not, not an understudy to Steve, but uh, like physically. physically under Steve. So, uh, right. So, uh, so that's, that's the, uh, the hard data about me. Uh, fun fact, more than a thousand times I've jumped out of a, a perfectly good airplane and one time out of one that wasn't so perfectly good. But that's a story for another time. All right. So let's get to know you guys. Uh, how many here tonight consider yourselves developers? A few, yeah, okay, well, well, that's more than a few. All right, and how many consider yourselves QA? Uh, yeah, great, great. And uh, out of the QA, who's doing automation right now? Okay, um, maybe, yeah, a less, little less than half of the people. And, and who wants to do and is not yet doing automation? Or, or is thinking about it? Uh, okay, yeah, good, all right. So, um, so you guys will be particularly interested, but hopefully everyone else will be uh, interested as well to learn about Cucumber. Has anyone here uh, heard about Cucumber before? Oh yeah, all right, great. So good, 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 all right. So uh, just to set the stage, um, there's a lot of automation tools out there and if you're not involved with them, they can probably all look the same. So just uh, real briefly, why, why we have so many automation tools well, uh, and why would we want to do automation? Uh, it's a heavy lift. Why would we want to do it? Just, you, you may al already uh, be aware of this, but uh, it's going to free you up to do uh, more exploratory testing rather than the same old stuff, yet again, just to make sure your app works. It's your security blanket, uh, you know, to make sure things are still working right. Uh, it's going to do things faster than a human can. It's going to repeat them with more precision than a human can. Uh, and uh, it's going to give you more coverage of the different scenarios. So those are the reasons for automation. All right, let's go just a quick history. Uh, we're gonna use our Wayback Machine to do a little quick history on uh, Cucumber. 2008, Aslak Helsoy uh, started the project. That was after the 1900s. And uh, it was based on Dan North's RSpec Story Runner. I don't know if anyone's heard of that. And that was based on RBehave, which was a Ruby port of JBehave. Anyone familiar with any of those terms? Yeah, three, four of you. All right, don't worry about it. You don't, it doesn't matter. Um, you, you'll get a lot out of this without that. If, if you want to, look that stuff up later. Uh, but don't worry, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll be fine. So five key things if you walk away from this that you should take away about Cucumber, uh, if, if nothing else. Uh, number one, it's free. So um, that's good. Uh, it, it runs on Windows, Mac, or Linux. So that's a good thing. I, the, the very most key thing I think is communication. It helps with communication and I'll talk more how it does that. Um, a little far away from the, all right, so it tests, you can test web, uh, websites, APIs, but a whole lot more actually too. So the title was a little bit misleading. It's not just a UI testing tool. You can do, use it for a lot of other things that you'll see. And uh, with Cucumber, there's an English part and a code part. All right. So how is Cucumber different and cool? There's my friend there with a different looking <laughs> Cucumber. So let's zoom in and see how Cucumber is different and cool. So as I mentioned, I use it for web testing and uh, REST API testing, but you can use it uh, for lots of other things. Uh, Java, JVM languages, uh, there's a wire protocol for TCP sockets. You can test mobile with it. You can .NET Mono. Flex, Flash and Action Script, JavaScript, Node.js, iOS, PHP, C++. There's a lot of platforms that it supports if you get the right plugin. And all that information's out there on GitHub. And uh, I'll make uh, all these links that I'm flashing up there, they'll be available in some form after the meeting if you're interested. All right. All right, so has anyone heard of behavior-driven development before? Yeah, quite a few, that's awesome, all right. So uh, for, you, for those of you that don't know uh, what it is, does anyone want to uh, give a two sentence, two or three sentence, uh, your opinion of or your 
uh, understanding of what behavior-driven development is. Anyone want to go? Go ahead. Define behavior first, develop the code for it later. Exactly. Yeah, that's a great, great, uh, great uh, um, summary, summarization of it. Yeah. The uh, business analysts usually are the ones de defining the behaviors and providing concrete examples. And then the team, the rest of the team creates and tests each feature per those expectations. And uh, again, if you don't know what behavior-driven development is, if you've never heard of that before, that's okay. Just uh, take away that it's uh, Cucumber's considered a, a BDD tool. And you don't really have to be doing BDD to use Cucumber. You can still use it. All right. So guy on the left says, uh, no, I think you're misinterpreting it. And then Dilbert says, wait a minute, I wrote it. So uh, probably a lot of us have been in those situations where you know, things are interpreted differently. There's a miscommunication, and it causes like a few days' work to get thrown away or have to be redone and stuff like that. I'm sure we've all been there, right? So um, the idea, ASLAC's idea with this tool is to bring these worlds together, the requirements world, the automated testing world, the documentation world. Um, and uh, you know, uh, analogous with that, our requirements often sit in one system and the tests sit in another one and then the documentation's in yet another one. So the idea here is that Cucumber can cover all, the, all three, these three areas and reduce communication problems. And uh, we'll see that in the English part uh, coming up next. All right, so the two parts, the, the English part and the code part. So the English part, the, uh, the way we set our words up, uh, the syntax of it is called uh, Gherkin. And has ever, anyone ever used or uh, the given when then kind of syntax before? Probably, yeah, yeah, good. So uh, just like you have a certain syntax when you're writing a, a user story in Agile, um, this has a certain given when and, and then uh, syntax to help us communicate clearly. So the given sets the context. You're usually talking about uh, maybe what user you're logged in and what screen you're at or where you're at in your app and what's happened up to this point. The, the when describes an event, you know, the, uh, the thing that's, uh, that happens that you're testing, and then the then describes your expected result. And an, an example of that, um, so the scenario is like a test name. So this scenario is refunded items, increased stock counts, a customer given, a customer previously bought a black sweater. Um, anytime you see and, you're just adding on to the thing, so uh, adding to the, the context here. So given the customer previously, previously bought a black sweater and there are currently three black sweaters in stock, when the sweater's returned for the refund, so that's the key event here, then our expected result, there are now four black sweaters in stock. So it should be pretty, pretty clear to everyone what's going on. Business analyst is going to understand that. So should the QA and developer. And for the code part, you have uh, what are called the step definitions. So the English part are the steps, and the code part are the step definitions. Uh, they're commonly done in Ruby, but they can be done in other languages, Python, JavaScript, Java, and several others there. All right, so I'm going to move on to a demo next. But one last thing before I do that. Uh, should you be further interested uh, in Cucumber, the great book written by the man himself, Aslak Helsoy, along with Matt Wynn, The Cucumber Book. You can, I believe you can find that on Amazon. There's a, a site, Pragmatic uh, Books, I think, that has it. So you can get a PDF. Uh, the great, it's a great place to start if you want more information on Cucumber. All right, so I'll do a little demo now. So the, the text is very huge. Oh, wind that back just a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Let's move this over. OK. So typically what we do for the, 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 uh, these, um, there are feature files that organize our scenarios, our test scenarios. So a lot of times a feature will correspond to a user story or cover several user stories. So sometimes what I do is just use the uh, story text in the feature. So you have the um, as a internet user, I want to have a search function so that I can see valuable pictures of cats. <laughs> so, uh, so in this uh, scenario, I have a smoke test. And uh, so given that the user Bob has opened the browser, when the user loads google.com, then a blank search input box is presented. 
And so that's the English part. And the code part that corresponds with it, in this case I did it in Ruby. So uh, Ruby, uh, so the, when Cucumbers run it, it goes through all the feature files or whichever feature file you select and interprets each line. So it encounters the line that says uh, user Bob has opened the browser. And so it'll look for a matching uh, step in, uh, in your uh, steps definitions, in your step definitions. So here it'll find uh, this particular step. And in this case, uh, the browser's already going to be open for us. So in this simplistic example, there's, there's nothing really to do. So I just have a comment there. And I know Steve somewhere is cringing that I have a comment in my code. So uh, I apologize, Steve. Uh, so uh, when the user loads uh, google.com, it's going to go through. And uh, it, it's using uh, regular expressions to, to match the steps. And so here, um, we're going to grab the URL into a parameter based on that regular expression. So really, this step is more valuable than a simple hard-coded step because we're going to be able to launch any, any website we want, really, with this step. Um, I'm using what's called Capybara, which is like a, a plug-in or a gem you can use to enhance Cucumber. Um, so we're just saying visit URL, pretty simple. And our then step, a blank search input box is presented. Uh, we're basically using the find field and uh, it'll search by ID, but this is flexible enough to use uh, CSX, CSS expressions or XPath expressions. So if we didn't have a handy ID to use, an HTML ID, we could find this field based on uh, any other property it has, the text within the element, or by other elements around this element. Um, so it's pretty flexible. Um, so I'll go ahead and run this. I can see what Cucumber does. And you can see, given the user Bob has opened a browser, and there comes the browser. And it's looking for that search input box, and it's there. Great. Passed. And I want to take the example just a little bit further to show you neat things about how Cucumber works here and how it's behavior driven. So I have another scenario here. And I'm going to enable it. This is a tag, this at symbol. So I'm uh, actually kind of uh, showing what user story it goes with in case we want traceability. And this one says, this is an actual search. So it's more than a smoke test. So given user Bob has opened the browser and the user loads google.com, when the user searches for cats, then the search results include cat-wikipedia. So I don't have definitions for these last two steps yet, because I've defined the behavior before I've implemented the code. So let's save this and see what Cucumber does when there are no definitions for some of the steps. Run Cucumber again. So given Bob has opened a browser. And you'll notice it's Firefox coming up. So by default, Cucumber works with Firefox, but it's relatively easy to uh, modify it to uh, run against Chrome. Uh, Firefox and Chrome behave very similarly, as probably a lot of you have experienced. And then you can run it against IE, but that's more challenging. Uh, the setup is easy, but IE you know, behaves differently than Chrome and Firefox, so it's challenging for that reason. You may have to change the way you're identifying elements to run against IE. So let's take a quick look at what that output is. Bob's open a browser. He loads Google.com. And then we see these steps. Hopefully you can see they're in, they're in yellow. So uh, the two scenarios, it actually ran both scenarios, because I didn't uh, tell it to, to just run one. So it ran both, one passed, one was undefined, or had undefined steps. Here are the two undefined steps. And it says you can implement step definitions for these undefined steps with these snippets. And it gives you snippets which you can cut and paste into your steps. And you can implement the steps then. So it gives you a nice head start in implementing your steps. Yep. Time up. Uh, All right. Very good. OK. We'll do Q&A at the end. So Very good. We'll have lots of opportunities to give that our time. All right. Thanks, everybody.